Oh, hi, how are you? So, this video is just like audio only because um, <laughs> we've got a guest in the house right now and I just sort of decided that I would um, record this video uh, in an unusual place in the house, <laughs> which is sort of not the ideal place to make a video, but anyway, that's why it's audio only. Um, anyway, I just thought that I would do a little bit of um, a little talk about this channel and you know, just a little bit about the, the the past and the future and you know how things are evolving and you know the the the, the long and short of it is that probably now is a good time to put the channel into hibernation basically uh, to just um, go on hiatus, I guess you could say. Now, uh, what I will say is that the channel isn't going to, like, disappear. Um, now, I may stop uploading for quite a while, uh, you know, or I may stop uploading travel videos for quite a while. Uh, but the videos that are, that are here already, um, I'm just going to let, let them stay there forever. Um, because they are actually... Uh, a, a resource for people who, who want to travel, especially people who want to come to travel to New Zealand because I made a lot of videos about New Zealand travel destinations and things like that. And they are also uh, a very minor source of revenue because I, you know, I am, I do have Google AdSense and everything and, you know, probably earn between one and two hundred dollars per year in the AdSense revenue on these videos. Uh, but the idea was that, you know, before starting this travel channel, I had done a few different types of YouTube videos. I sort of had started off with, uh, on my other channel, which is now called Kiwi Kai Moana, I had started off with uh, animation, uh, like animated short films, and then I had done paintball videos because I played paintball for about 12 years uh, through my 20s and 30s and then I did pro wrestling videos and then I started the travel videos and so I had gone through this process of, of doing all of these changes and when you do that uh, you, you kind of Every time you make a change, you sort of alienate your audience because there'll only be a few of them that are going to carry over with you and, you know, that, that were watching your old videos and then they're going to stay watching. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was a guy named Rob. I don't really stay in touch with him too much anymore. Good guy. Uh, and he was one of the earliest people who was doing online paintball videos and he was doing it way back in like 2003 before YouTube even existed and you know he built up quite a I guess you could say a bit of a cult following doing that and he transitioned and uh, he got to the point where he was getting tired of playing paintball and so he started doing gaming videos so he did, uh, and, and he really focused on MMOs and uh, World of Warcraft. And so, you know, there was only a limited amount of his audience that stuck with him, you know, because you're essentially talking about how much crossover is there and how much have people invested in your personal brand that they want to sort of stick with you. So, you know, he must have had about a thousand, oh, sorry, uh, about 3,000 or so uh subscribers to his paintball channel and then um you know he changed and to, to the gaming videos and so that decreased the number of viewers you know and then you've got to try to boost it back up again uh and then he did the same thing a few years after that he got tired of making the um the gaming videos and then he started doing cycling videos and, and by the time he got to the cycling videos you're talking about only having by that point one or two hundred subscribers and your videos are only getting you know 50 views or less than the 50 views you know so every time you sort of evolve and change a lot of your audience kind of disappears 
and you've got to try to get new audience. Uh, and then the other problem happens is that um, <laughs> your audience um, quickly forgets you. And this is a problem uh, and uh, because people will see one video or two videos of yours that they like and they will hit subscribe and they will just stay subscribed to you forever without watching you know, any more of your videos. And I, I think this is a problem with YouTube and it's been a problem for years and I really wish that there was something that you could do as a creator. So like for example I really wish that if you know if you had the option in your settings so that anybody who has subscribed to you but they haven't engaged with your channel recently like they haven't uh, watched a video in six months or they haven't commented on a video in six months or you know whatever the amount of time is basically you can set the parameters so that if people have subscribed but then they haven't engaged with your content at all um, then you have the power to to force them to unsubscribe to you you know you can automatically unsubscribe them you know from you so that you no longer show up in, in your uh, in their subscription feed um, because the thing is it, it leads to the sort of false numbers because you have this problem where uh, you know thousands of people will go and hit subscribe and then nobody ever watches your videos ever again and so you'll have a channel which has got thousands of subscribers and it, it doesn't get any views um, I know another fella uh, from the US um, named uh, Nathan and uh, he lives in the desert or at least the last time I saw him making videos he lives in the desert in California and they got these wild donkeys around the place and they sort of wander in and out of the towns and he filmed a few of these donkey videos of donkeys, you know, chasing each other, donkeys shitting all over the, the pavement, and um, donkeys having sex with each other, and, and uh, donkeys stealing food out of rubbish bins, uh, donkeys standing in the middle of the motorway when the cars are driving past, this type of stuff. And for some reason, those donkey, vi donkey videos are really popular. Like, um, and, and he had a couple of them go viral and get like over a million views. And so he got, you know, like 6,000 subscribers. At least, when it last time I checked, 6,000 subscribers. And then you go look, and then he uploads another video, and you know, whatever the other video is, and like it gets 20 or 30 views. You know, no one watches it. So this is the problem with, with subscribers on YouTube, is that they're unreliable. They don't watch your videos. Your, your subscriber count basically means nothing. Uh, so, I mean, we, you, you have to think to yourself, where does that leave you as as a YouTube, as a as a a movie maker, someone that m makes videos for YouTube? So you have to sort of have a think about that. And I mean, what I found is that the only way um, that you can really trust uh, people to watch your videos is to actually rely on the YouTube algor algorithm to recommend your videos to people. Um, now you can do this anyway by looking at your uh, YouTube analytics and you have a look at the um, in the videos about where the, the traffic sources are. So where did the traffic source come from for this video and it'll give you like a pie chart. So it'll tell you how many uh, percent came from uh, clicking on a, an end card or how many came from YouTube search, how many came from the subscriptions tab, uh, how many came from, uh, they used to be called annotations, now they're called cards, uh, and so on, and how many were external links from an external website. Uh, and the most important thing here is how many were recommended and you'll find that probably your biggest sources of, of traffic to any of your YouTube videos are actually coming, not from your subscribers, um, but you, you find that it's coming from YouTube search and from the recommended tab. So, you know, I, I, I've been watching this for, for not just a short time, not just for weeks, not just for months. I mean, I've been watching this for, for years now on YouTube. 
you know, just constantly going back and looking at the analytics and looking at the other things that people are saying, you know, because because there's always there's lots of other YouTubers out there that are always making videos about how to how to make videos and how to be successful on YouTube and rati rati ra. So, so I went through this process of thinking to myself about what am I going to do with why in the world the YouTube channel. And as I said earlier, uh, the, the channel is not going to go away because after going through these videos here, you know, uh, the, the, the animated short films, um, the paintball, the pro wrestling, and now travel, I settled on travel because even though it's not necessarily the most popular um, type of video to be going and making on YouTube, um, it's a it's a it's a type of video that I think I will not be bother I won't be bored of it I won't be sick of it you know in 20 or 30 or 40 years now from now uh, you know I won't be sick of making them and I won't be sick of watching them um, that said I, I do have some limits and, and I'll talk about that in a moment because um, the thing is the the world is a big place and if you enjoy traveling even if it's just traveling locally you know even if it's just within your city or within your province you know or within your local area within within your own country domestically whatever type of travel you do um you know if you get some pleasure out of that then you're going to get pleasure out of uh, making videos and sharing those videos about your travel and then uh, watching other people's videos who have uh, you know similar travel experiences and you know so I started the travel channel and you know this is four years ago now in 2016 and I sort of thought well you know I'd really like to do as big and as epic as I possibly could and I sort of thought well I'm not going to go quitting my day job though I'm not going to try to you know copy people and, and emulate their success um, now when I started the travel channel um, that was right at the time when uh, there was a YouTube vlogger named Casey Neistat was starting to get really really popular and a lot of YouTube people were trying to copy him and that I at the time and even now I don't really care at all about what he was doing because he wasn't what I was looking at. I was looking at my uh, a, a community of travel vlogger people. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a few names. You know, there was uh, Fun for Louie and uh, Traveling K uh, and um, oh God, there's a few of them that uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Where's Poppy is another one. Um, Psycho Traveler. Um, uh, and there's probably more of them. I can't even remember the names of all of them. So I was watching these people and just seeing what they're doing. And I sort of noticed a bit of a trend. Is that over time. Uh, as the world has changed over the past few years. And we've had this increased... Um, global focus on climate change and uh, carbon emissions and plastic pollution and th there's a lot of focus now on things that are regarding saving the planet that will have a direct impact on your lifestyle so how does that affect a, a youtube vlogger for example right so if you're a person that goes and makes travel videos you know, maybe, you know, in keeping in line with the things that are being talked about, you know, the zeitgeist, the things that are happening in today's world, maybe you end up having to, you know, stop using single-use plastic items, you know, and that that is a bit of a, a change in the way you live your life. So you, you, you're talking about when you go to a restaurant, you know, not using the the single-use plastic items, you know, the utensils, and then bringing your own, that sort of thing. Uh, you know, or even if you're a YouTube vlogger, there's there's even a whole thing now about, um, you know, uh, shaming people for taking airplanes, you know. It's like, oh, you know, well, you don't really need to travel, and, you know, you, you, you pay the airline's money to get on that plane, and 
the plane produces carbon emissions and why just so you can fly to the other side of the world and see it like i don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with that but you know it's it suddenly become a uh, like a political football it's become a thing that the, the people are using to criticize other people so i mean it's not to say that all of these it's it's like most things in life is that um the 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 the, the the paintings that people paint for you, you know, verbally when they tell you a story and they give you their opinion, the stories people tell are not always completely grounded in reality. Uh, it's not always easy to know what the full reality is, but anyway, it, the point here is, uh, I'm going off on a tangent, the point there is that the, your, a lot of your people, your YouTube people, have had to change up the way that they've been doing their videos and I mean to you know and I'm no exception I've been changing up my videos and trying to find what works so I started getting into this uh, you know, snorkeling and uh, free diving and um, shellfish gathering fishing type stuff and I tell you what fishing in New Zealand is hard because you, if you go to the beach and you got a fishing rod and you got a lure on the end or bait or whatever it is, if you if you just go ahead and throw that <laughs> that that thing into the water, um, trust me, you you're not catching a fish. <laughs> you are not. Uh, like if you just go and pick some random place, you you're not going to catch a fish. There's just there's not a lot of fish in the ocean. I mean, there probably was a hundred years ago. I've watched that uh, TV show, uh, Clark Gayford's Fish of the Day, and you know, and, and he actually pulls up these old newsreels from New Zealand back in the 1920s and 30s, and you know, time like that. And it, it, the fish was a hell of a lot more plentiful in, in the ocean. But the overall process, that whole activity of uh, getting onto a boat, uh, you know, getting in the water and swimming, snorkeling collecting some shellfish you know possibly trying to catch a fish um, and then maybe one of the day in the future I might try spear fishing as well I mean this whole process is something that I've I've taken an interest in and it's something that I've been searching for in my life because I gave up paintball in 2015 and I never I, I was trying to find something to replace that with uh, because it felt like there was a hole in my life, you know, where I had a hobby and then and then, then after that I didn't. Uh, I tried archery for a couple of years and, uh, you know, that was fun, but it was just, uh, it just wasn't quite right. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it is, it just wasn't quite right. So after giving up archery, it was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll do the diving thing. And, you know, I found that I really, really liked that. And so I started uploading some of those uh, dive videos onto Why in the World. And I found that, oh my goodness, people are interested. And I, I've been really struggling with those travel videos on this Why in the World channel to actually find a sub-genre of video, some kind of genre of video, that A, people want to watch, and B, I want to make because that's the eternal struggle isn't it is that you can make a a video that you hate and you, you're not interested at all and it's just shit but other people they all want to see it and or the reverse of that is you know, there's something that you love and you want to make a detailed awesome video and the audience doesn't give a fuck and they're not going to watch it and <laughs> And that's like the eternal problem, the eternal struggle with, with YouTubers and, and, and content. And so I found that, that people will watch food videos and people will watch fishing videos and dive videos and stuff. And these are things that I like to do. So, you know, I relaunched my other channel, Kiwi Kaimoana. It's now called Kiwi Kaimoana. Um, and I've done 10 episodes on there. And uh, in the future, I'll be doing more. I, I don't know how many episodes per year I'll make, but it's mostly going to be seasonal, mostly over 
the course of the spring and summer and that and I'm only planning on doing anywhere from say 5 to 15 episodes per year you know it's not like a th one of these things we are putting out a video every week like you know, I, I just I'm, I'm not going to do that that's this is not going to happen and you know and then we we reach 2021 and the world that we're living in today and it's like okay well if you've established a travel channel what do you do in the world of coronavirus <laughs> because right now i mean we've been we've been in this for a year now at the time i'm making this video we've been in this for a year where yeah covid hit the world in sort of april ish 2020 and you know it was already in china before then but it sort of spread out to the world around about april 2020 and we've been struggling with it ever since so different nations depending on how they're dealing with it are going in and out of lockdowns um and there's travel restrictions everywhere so if you travel you're going to end up with situations where there's like uh uh managed isolation compulsory quarantine that sort of thing and you know tour operators that are doing tours or you know, in the tourism industry or whatever it is that they do it could be a person that does a jet boat ride on a river it could be someone that does a bungee jump it could be people that work at a museum and they show the tourists around whatever the tourist attraction thing is that people do like all of that is like on hold like the globally the entire tourism industry is on hold and it could potentially be on hold for a few more years it really just depends on how long it takes us to, to all get out of this because now a year later we've got covid vaccines but they're not widespread available everywhere you know it's it's because you're talking about inoculating the the entire world population <laughs> And so you know, all of those vaccines have got to be manufactured and they've got to be rolled out to the most important people first. Um, and you've got to try to roll them out as evenly as you can, but that's not going to happen, and you know, because of logistics. Um, so we're not even at this point now where, where people are vaccinated. You know, some people are vaccinated, but most people are not at the time that I'm making this video. So there's this long, slow process of vaccinating the entire world. And obviously the first world countries are going to get it first. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's actually technology and infrastructure is required to vaccinate people because the, you know, the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine, for example, they have to be refrigerated like well, well down below zero, like negative 70 degrees. So you have to have refrigeration facilities and then you have to have the ability to, to give those vaccines to people, whether you're taking the vaccine to the people or you're taking the, the people to the vaccine, whichever way you do it, you have to have the logistical ability to vaccinate people. And in the old third world countries where people are living out in the wilderness and that sort of thing, I mean, that's a problem. That's a problem. How do you actually get the vaccine to people? So, you know, there's going to be people in the world that aren't going to get the vaccine for years it's going to take that long for them to get it because of these logistical reasons which means that the tour the global tourism industry is going to have difficulties for years um, now again probably the first world countries will will jump over this hurdle earlier so um, you know places that have got good vaccine rollouts um, you know things will go back to normal quicker but you know you though those other countries and aren't the first world countries then you know they're going to struggle so in terms of making a youtube channel now that is travel focused to be honest it's just crazy you know trying to make a travel youtube channel in the world of a pandemic is crazy uh, and a lot of those youtubers that i mentioned earlier your people like your fun for Louie and Psycho Traveler and, and Where is Poppy and stuff like that. A lot of them are finding alternative content to make. They're just doing different things. And, and hoping that their audience sticks with them and keeps on watching. So, 
you know, for, for all these reasons, for the, the things that I've described, you know, the time is right now to more or less put this channel into hibernation, to more or less put it into on, on hiatus. It doesn't mean that I've completely cancelled and completely stopped making these videos, but it means that for a while um, there's just not going to be much content. And unfortunately, the algorithm hates that, and the people don't like it either, all right? Because people are creatures of habit. And when you're talking about an audience, you know, like like uh, someone that watches a daily vlogger, you know, they get accustomed accustomed to seeing that content regularly, like all day, you know, you know, sorry, not all day, every day there's a new video, there's a new video, the person comes out with a new video, or, or if it's weekly, every week, oh, there's a new video. People like that routine, and when a content creator, someone who makes videos on YouTube, is uh, sporadic and unreliable, you know, with their content, um, people don't really like that, and, and they'll stop watching, and they'll forget about you, and this is the problem, and like, <laughs> I mean, my videos are no different, now they're getting even, they, they've never gotten all that many views, but now they're getting even less views than what they used to. So, yeah, and again, this ties back into what I said earlier about learning from the YouTube analytics, which is that you cannot rely on your subscribers. They are um, a incredibly fickle, unreliable bunch who will not watch your videos. And the better way to accumulate views and watch time, which is ultimately what YouTube cares about, YouTube doesn't really care about subscribers. YouTube cares about watch time, watch minutes. That is the most important measurement, metric of success on YouTube, is watch time. You know, are you making a video that people are watching all the way through? And is that video a long video? And are you producing, you know, not just one video, but multiple videos, and people are watching it, like, all the way through? Um, and what I found with my Kiwi Kai Moana videos is I've had a look at them and I've had a look at the audience engagement on them and it's fairly good actually because about 50% of the audience is watching the video all the way through or sort of almost all the way through um, which is quite good um, because a lot of other videos that I've made in the past you know, the audience just drops off straight down from 100% down to about 20%, you know, in the first 30 seconds, and then and then it never ever picks up, you know. And a, a lot of that is, is is about knowing your audience and what type of video you're making, how are you making the video, are you telling a good story. You know, so audience retention is important, and the way you tell a story is really important to retain your audience, you know, to retain their attention um, but you know also it's not just it's not only your storytelling it's also the content you've actually got to be making something that people want to see okay we'll just about wrap things up but I just want to briefly touch on um, a couple more things um, I really want to keep doing something uh, on this channel and, and maintain a connection with um, with the audience uh, there are people that I have met through the uh, last four years of um, doing this YouTube vlogging thing this this travel thing and like I mean even if I was to sort of not really make all that many videos anymore I really feel that those relationships um, those friendships with those people are, are really valuable and I, and I feel that they are far more valuable than the uh, the content itself you know um, now the thing is that the uh, some of these people that I've met um, and I'll give a few names in a moment some of these people I've met don't live here in Christchurch and uh, you know so the best way to interact with them is to actually continue to interact with their videos and to uh, make your own videos from from time to time so so for that reason this channel isn't going to completely totally stop altogether you know, uh, I, I am going to discontinue the travel videos until, you know, for a while. I mean, it could be like a couple of years. I don't know. 
um, but I mean I may do something else instead um, I may do like well anyway or, or some of these people like for example um, like like Daryl uh, from Auckland and uh, you know Dave from Auckland Hamish from here in Christchurch and uh, Karen um, from uh, Tamaranui and uh, there's the uh, the backpacker guide um, Robin and Laura um, from the Central North Island and uh, uh, Marie Mari from Wellington um, so these are all other youtubers that have got similar channels um, I've probably left off some uh, some people that are um, making those YouTube videos and and then there's those people who I'll probably never meet but still you know that they, they watch this channel on occasion and uh, you know and and it's nice to have them pop in and and, and watch a video because you know that that's all that's what this is all about it's all about sharing um, you know people like uh, Siam I am and Joseph K and Anthrit and um, ABC one two three, um, just the uh, just those those people that just sort of pop in from time to time and watch watch your videos. I mean, it, it's nice when they do that as well. So yeah, I mean, I I want to continue doing something, but you know, the the model of of doing the travel videos, um, I don't think is going to work in the future, and it's definitely not going to work in the next you know, a couple of years, because we're, we're, it's going to take us a few years, honestly, for the entire world to recover from the COVID situation. <coughs> so, <clears throat> I may just do, like, a, a little wee daily vlog type thing, sort of like what Daryl does, where you don't put a lot of editing into your video and stuff, you just do a little a basic video. Uh, or, or I may do like a little talks about current events or something or I may do sort of philosophy type stuff talking about um, um, guidelines for living your life and being a better person and um, just I'm not talking about social justice warrior stuff I'm just talking about um, uh, skills for um, interacting with the world <laughs> um, I can't say too much more than that um, just uh, like I'll give you an example of that you know uh, w I would look at a, a, a saying I would pick a saying in English and then sort of explain what that saying means and, and, and what it means when you apply that to the real world you know, that, that's an example of what that would be but anyway I, I haven't made any decisions about what that stuff is going to be going forward but um Anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. So uh, just to summarize, um, there's not going to be any more travel videos for the foreseeable future. There will be something else that will come out sporadically in its place. Um, during the summertime, I will still be focusing on the other channel, on Kiwi Kai Moana. So, you know, if you're interested to find out what I'm up to and there's nothing coming out here, nothing coming out on this channel, then, um, you know, make sure you have a look on the other channel. Uh, but the other channel, it is only going to be um, in, in the warmer months, you know. Basically, I'm only making videos on that channel for six months out of the year. So it's only going to be in, you know, spring and summer, that sort of time of the year. Well, for the most part, there'll be the odd winter video, but for the most part, that's going to be just done in the summertime. <laughs> Okay, wow, long video, long video, thanks for watching, bye bye.